Phil begins his quest in Fumania in northern Spain, at one of the most spectacular dinosaur stomping grounds on the globe. This cliff face is pockmarked with over 3,000 dinosaur footprints. Every time I come to this locality, I can't fail to be gobsmacked at how gorgeous it is. Paleontologists have catalogued and studied this place for years, but no one has ever attempted what Phil's about to try. He wants to figure out how these dinosaurs moved. He knows that these dinosaurs did not scale these cliffs. The neighborhood has changed a lot in 70 million years. Near the end of the age of dinosaurs, when Fumania was steamy, swampy, and horizontal, hulking 60-ton titanosaurs called it home. They pressed their flat-footed imprints deep into the mud. Tides and storms washed layers of mud into the fresh tracks, protecting them from the elements. Over millions of years, more mud and sand covered the footprints and compressed them into solid rock. Then the Earth moved. Over millions of years, the African tectonic plate collided with Europe, giving birth to this mountain range, the Pyrenees. And the ancient mud plain went high-rise, taking the titanosaur trackways with it. Now Phil and his team will use forensic technology to turn these stone-cold tracks into fluid dinosaur motion. This team of Spanish paleontologists, including Dr. Bernard Villa, have painstakingly mapped these footprints for over a decade, hand measuring one print at a time. They've invited Phil to hang out with them. Why is it I always feel a little bit nervous when I'm going to be lowered off the edge of a perfectly good cliff? <laughs> the track survived for 70 million years, and now Phil has come just in time to see them vanish. Yeah, that works. <laughs> but it's not the easiest way of, of mapping a locality. This is a nightmare. And it cuts your bollocks like no tomorrow. The weather that exposed the tracks in the first place now grinds them down. I can see there's the first track there. Even studying the fragile footprints down. adds to their destruction. And is this the way you've been recording them till now? Yeah. You're mad. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> bonkers. I can see with the tracks, it's really hard to measure the, the length and the width because it's a three-dimensional form. How do you know what you're measuring is the right width or length? It's really difficult. Because uh, I don't know where is the, the exactly the, the, the old line, so... You broke the track. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> you just damaged... It's changed now. It's longer. Yeah, yeah. It just... <laughs> it, just it, it shows the point. A, when you're dangling up here in the middle of nowhere, that just by touching the tracks and measuring them by hand, they, they are so friable, they just break away. Yeah, sadly. That's true, yeah. Phil predicts that in a decade, these trackways will be history, but not in a good way. They're fading already. It's a pain in the neck. I need a 3D map of this trackway to work out exactly what these titanosaurs were doing and how they were walking. And the only way to do that is by using LIDAR. Phil's flown in Frank Rarity, Geologist and long range LIDAR specialist. Power up. We'll start with an overview scan of the, the entire outcrop and then we'll break it down into individual trackways that we'll uh, look at in much higher resolution. It does look a bit like a James Bond nuclear weapon, but it does a remarkable job. There's nothing else that can do it. It's just fantastic that we're recovering so much information at this locality because the potential of using this technology here has not really been realized before, so I think it's really exciting.